Hello again. Um, I've been having a little bit of a rocky time lately, uh, making rocks actually. Uh, I've done other tutorials where we've made some basic rocks, but I've been uh, um, experimenting a little bit and I've come up with a few nice uh, interesting techniques and textures that I'd like to share with you so that you can make some uh, a little bit more interesting rocks and also uh, some variations on other tutorials that I've done. Now these two kinds of rocks are quite nice ones and you will notice that the closer we get the more detail we're able to get. Now right up to as close as we can. Now those rocks are fairly detailed rocks. They're very much feature rocks that you want to do close-ups with so that they look pretty realistic and you can get fairly close in and get the texture there. And this kind of rock was made with this technique which I showed using um, wax. But in this case I went to the expense of actually making one first in wax and then I actually made it out of plaster with cloth and stuff. I used the same technique using toilet paper and then several layers of that. Then here you're going to take your new piece and piece it together and at some stage or another it will go around corners and make some pretty decent looking stuff. Now those are nice detailed rocks when you need some good close-ups or uh, something that's quite detailed. But there are times when you're going to need rocks that are quite general and just fillers right in the background. And particularly if you're in a cave, for example, you're going to need uh, some rocks that aren't quite so detailed and are quicker to make. So here are some other examples. And there are some filler ones, but if you, you can see that if you go close enough, you're gonna start seeing bits of paper and stuff but it still does a pretty good fill. Now you can use uh, that other technique of, that I showed you before to make a very bouldery type of uh, rock face. But in the case of this one, um, I'm not going to go to the trouble of making quite so many individual bouldery things because I actually want a rock face like this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take a couple of sheets of paper, get my watered down um, white Ilmer's glue PVA, my favourite type of glue, all these sorts of things, put it on there, over the two sheets, and then I take one sheet on a base that I've already started here, and I'm going to be sticking it one sheet behind and then the other sheet right exactly on top so that it's going to have a good, about half of it, a third to a half of it is going to be sticking to the other. So that now, under that, when I do another one, I'm going to have about four sheets. So the next time, I'm going to just stick it under there, very basically. And it's going to build up fairly quickly so that now where I have my overlaps here is going to be four sheets down here it's two sheets and you just keep going like a, a fish scale thing so that you get that and you'll find that in its strange sort of way it will start to undulate and it will start to bend and when you've got pieces like this you'll start to join them together and they'll bulge a little bit and you'll get lumps and hollows and things now to get an interesting texture like this so onto your wider face wall. You take your sheet of paper, quickly put a bit of glue over. Then you're gonna take that sheet of paper and scrunch it, flatten it, and then apply a little more glue over the whole entire thing. And then take that bit of paper and then stick it on there and squash it. The reason for having that glue on the paper is so that when you squash it there, it's gonna flatten down. If you don't put that glue, it will sponge up and it will be more spongy and it will not take as much detail as this other thing, and which is a lot more solid and a lot more nicer detail. 
Then take yet another sheet of paper and put your glue on, making sure it goes right out to the edges, the four edges. On there, take that paper and then we're going to put that right on top and scrunch it on nicely there. Apply a couple of those and when it dries it will shrink down and be a lot more solid. And once you get the paint on it will look a little bit more texturized. Now the next thing is how to get some interesting looking cracks. Once again Take some sheets of a couple of sheets or three or a few. And I'm going to just join them, for example, end to end like this. And then take some more sheets. Glue them. And scrunch them. Scrunch them and block them. Flatten them. Put a bit more glue on. And Bonk it down there. Do that several times so that you're going to cover it as much as you're going to cover it. Scrunch it, bonk it, making some interesting sort of forms. And then on top of that, a couple of sheets you're going to be putting. And doing it on a desktop means that when you put your paper on, you can really flatten that in nice and tight and you get fairly defined sort of texture. You can't see it now while it's white but it will come up nicely when it's painted. And then when it's dry you're going to get something with the textures like those. And then I'm down the edge of this piece that I've prepared I'm going to put some glue down the edge take it to my wall and then instead of butting it there I'm going to put it on top that way and then with a stapler put some staples on it and then it's going to get a fix there and then some smaller bits of paper, reinforce the edge, stick on and bend it over. With a couple of those, probably a couple of layers. And uh, well, now that it's sort of starting to dry, it looks a little unimpressive, um, but when it starts to come up is when you start to paint it. Um, so we're going to give it a, a coat of really, really dark colour. A base colour, right in here, a little bit more green. Here we have the, the, the base coat. You might also want to put a little bit of um, other colours, like some yellow green. browns and maybe some reeds just to add a little bit to that. And then you're going to take another tone which is uh, a little bit lighter and then once it's dry, which is not, yes I won't be quite so quickly, but um, you're going to then um, with it slightly um, dry wet, but not wet wet, you're going to do your mid tone over the whole lot. And it's going to start bringing up that um, the texture that we've been adding, remember? All of those here. It's still not going to show up completely well, but it's going to start bringing it up. And then with a, a lighter brush, we're going to do some dry brushing where the paintbrush is almost dry to bring out that texture. And this is where all that texture we did with that little wads of paper underneath, that's where it really, that lovely texture starts to come out. Great. 
the dry brush. And also I can take some sort of dirty, fairly runny water on a paintbrush and just whip it out to add a bit of um, dirt and texture and stuff and maybe some swatches here and there and just roughen it up a bit for like, like that and also as well as that where I want some even smaller cracks like these ones are reasonably marked but if I want some hairline cracks I can get, get the paintbrush and put some very fine textured ones across there and they can join and crisscross and all those sorts of things plus you might get a rock that has actually got some um, impurities or some, some veins of other uh, kind of rock running through it so you can then add those sorts of things. When you start to see that your rock face is starting to look pretty reasonable you might want to um, emphasize some of those ones as well. But there we are, have a reasonable uh, rock face fairly quickly.